And many thanks for joining us on today's edition of Off the Press, where we bring you major headlines and analyze them uh, for you from here. And today with me to do this is a legal practitioner, Ifi Oji, and of course, a social commentator, Dr. Femi uh, Idowu Adeguke. Uh, thank you very much, both of you, for being with me this morning. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see you both. Uh, and of course, all our guests. So this morning, uh, we shall hit the ground running, beginning with the first paper here, which is the Punch newspaper. And on the front page of the Punch, it says, Nigeria may relapse into oil market imbalance. OPEC is saying that on page 36. And FEC okays 7.2% new VAT rate and 10 trillion Naira 2020 budget. You find that on page 28. Um, before it will be displayed very soon. And then Buhari approves panel on salary review. That's on page 12 of the Punch newspaper. Saipem Chiyoda uh, win and Dao wins $10 billion NLNG train seven. You find that also on page 25 of the Punch newspaper. Now let's go to the major issues here. Uh, the headlines, the big uh, story there is PDP hits judges as tribunal throws out Atiku's petition. Now displayed on your screen is the Punch newspaper and you find that big story on page two. And right uh, Underneath it is, our position has now been justified that the PDP and Atiku's petition was a complete waste of time. In their peril efforts, they insisted on taking the country on a circus and wild uh, goose chase. APC is saying that. You can see it there. And to the right, it says the party is also rudely shocked that the court took over the roles of the respondents' lawyers who clearly abandoned their pleadings by refusing to call evidence in defense of the petition, PDP. So, war of words there. And uh, we see also, I wasn't disturbed by Atiku's seat, uh, suit all along. President Buhari reveals that to us uh, as displayed. And we have picture stories uh, right at the down part of the Punch newspaper of the 187 Nigerians uh, that returned yesterday from South Africa. The South Africa employs rules to stop the other to stop hundreds. Uh, that's on page 13. I left wife, daughter, back with nothing. A returnee says. Uh, flights was delayed for 15 hours. Uh, Dabiri Erewa says that on page 13, you'll find all of that story. And on the bottom part completely, it says Quark performs surgeries in Ekiti Private Hospital. Mm -hmm. Commissioner is saying that, uh, I believe it's the Commissioner of Health, and that's on page 12. That's very serious. And Ogun Homeowner Scheme to be reviewed, says government on page 19. Oyo's wage increased by 1 billion naira after polls. Makinde says that on page 19. Buratai Fayemi disagree over security vote spending, page 44. And how police killed two four-year students, SUG president alleges on page 4 and 5, pages 4 and 5. And then reps minority whip, Wiki threatens PDP over Elumelu on page 18. Now, shall we begin uh, with the guests in studio? What, um, where do you want to begin, Dr. Idowu? Well, I'll, I'll start from the top left, which okay. is um, FEC OK 7.2% new VAT rate. Hmm. Yeah, I know, or we all know that the revenue of the state is dwindling because of our over-reliance on the crude oil. Mm -hmm. And the market is not very good. But the question is, you're increasing the VAT now. Yes, it's welcome, but the minimum wage approval has been lingering for too long, mm -hmm. and you're putting more tax on the people. That's just the question I have on that. And then we move on to the PDP eats. We were discussing yesterday mm. that where, whichever way the judgment goes mm -hmm. from the tribunal, Nigerians should just accept and be the gainer. Thank God we have a legal practitioner here today who can help us look the legal intricacies. Mm. But personally, I don't see any difference in APC and P, uh, PDP. So Nigerians should just hope for the best. You don't see any difference? No, in they, I've always said that, that they're the same. The, 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 the two political parties have held this country bondage for 20 years. Interesting. Ify, what are your thoughts uh, on today's paper? 
uh, PDP. You know who has a point? Uh, I mean, in terms of um, how what they have delivered to us as a nation, they, in some ways they have been lacking. But I feel like uh, in terms of partisan politics, there are definitely differences between the two. I mean, he has a point when he says that uh, certain similarities, are, and we know that uh, at the point where they were uh, having the, the campaign, the campaign rollouts, that are at least uh, a fourth of the uh, APC uh, candidates moved camp to uh, PDP. PDP, exactly. But also, you know, moving forward, we know that it is in our best interest to look at the separation of powers and the balance, checks and balances of this country, even though it's not always been a perfect system, to adhere to the judgment, move forward, think of a plan to um, take us to the next um, term. That way we can actually sort of like regroup and make sure that we are planning for the future of our development of Nigeria. Hmm. All right. Um, there's a picture story. I mean, I, I did the news and it was quite emotional uh, seeing the returnees uh, sing the national anthem and full of, you can, f the joy is palpable, you know, to be back home. But what are your thoughts? This 107, 187 uh, returnees are back so I made a trip to South Africa very recently, mm -hmm. and in the last couple of weeks, it's very clear that our system has failed the uh, Nigerian uh, nationals in South Africa especially. You know, our doors were closed to them, and we can only thank uh, private individuals like uh, the MD Airpist. of... Yeah, Airpist, Mr. Mm, Alan Nema, who, ha who has stepped in, doing his civic duty, and has pledged to bring the returnees back. And we know that at least for, for a country where uh, there was so much promise, 600 signed up to return to Nigeria. At that point, you know that this is their last hmm. ditch attempt at setting, putting their life together and making sure that their families are safe and secure. And these are things that we would ordinarily entrust the government to do. And now we're finding ourselves in situations where this, we are having to pick up the pieces as, uh, as part of our civic duty to put, make sure that Nigeria stays as, a, 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 as one unit, mm. you know, so. Yeah, I really agree to say, yes, um, it was a good step uh, for Onyema. I don't know yeah. what you think uh, to have offered to bring these people back no. in collaboration, of course, with the federal government. Yeah, it, it was a good, um, a good gesture. project, good mm -hmm. gesture by the government, and then the minister, and then uh, um, airpiece. Yes, and 640 Nigerians signed up to come in, but we've had um, 187 of them back in Nigeria. Mm. And then the flight was delayed for 15 hours, yeah. and over hundreds were held back by the South African government because they came up with some profiling at the airport. No, they were profiling them at the airport, okay. which I personally feel that was wrong. They should have done the profiling prior to them Get into the getting airport. on board and mm. coming back home. But having said that, we have them back. I was reading the story and I saw him, uh, one of the returnees said he's left his wife and daughter back mm. in South Africa. Very pathetic. He's, he left Nigeria in 2007. He's lived in South Africa for about 12 years, started a family, married to another African, non-Nigerian, now he's back home because his mother wants him back home. So where does he go from there? Yeah, I mean, this is really sad. Uh, come to think of it, uh, his family members, are they safe? Well, we won't know, but it's a yeah. question, you know, to... I mean, that, that question is a very valid question, mm -hmm. Amaka, because at the end of the day, even during my trip to South Africa, it was very obvious that the non-South Africans are really suffering, especially with the Black Empire, Economic Empowerment Program that is implemented there, mm. you know. So even where you have uh, non-South African immigrants that are uh, looking for jobs, that, 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 that they, they are at a disadvantage. So I don't, I'm not quite sure where, what sort of grounding that they, that all grounds that they typically have in terms of the commentators that say that most of the non-South Africans uh, take mm. the jobs of South Africans. It's got to a really, really fever pitch now where you have that local uh, neighboring countries, their boundaries are closed. They are closed, mm. so it's more or less a, a, a self-constructive uh, 
um, embargo. embargo. Mm. Yes, and that is just reminiscent, and it just echoes of the uh, apartheid period. So mm. we need to make sure that moving forward, that mm. we work closely with other governments. It's not a good. It's not a good idea for us to, at this critical point mm. to try and. Uh, uh, divide ourselves. This is the point where we are supposed to be unified and look for solutions together. Mm. And I don't think it's in any anyone's interest, any country's interest, to to sit on a position and take and see themselves as an island where other countries are also suffering at this point. Mm, that's yeah. true. Great. Now, um, there's this. I, I remember when I read this, I was all shook to say uh, quacks perform surgeries in equity private hospitals. I think everyone should run to page 12 really to find out, to read this story, but just hearing that um, is scary. For private hospital also, it is scary and I hope uh, a kid state government or those who are in charge would do something. I mean, a kid state government um, is known. That. Yeah, I could, sorry, Amaka. Yeah, I mean, a state is known particularly for its academic uh, prowess. prowess. They, they are very proud. So this would be a big, big um, blow to them because, mm. per cap, I mean, within the, their population, there are so many educated with one degree, two degrees. In fact, mm. even masters mm. and PhDs, yeah. they have yeah. a, a very high concentration of um, doctors there. So what it, it boggles the mind that at that critical point, you now have, you, you are having to uh, contend with malpractice suits, mm. which we don't even, normally in Nigeria, we should be able to even have, uh, we, should, we shouldn't I, I mean, I, I, us as a patient should know that my practice should be available mm -hmm. to us. But we don't really have uh, sort of recourse to any of those as uh, patients and people that have been filled by the health system. Mm. That's unfortunate. Uh, let, uh, me, let me quickly add okay. to that. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, because if you look the, from the xenophobia and everything, it makes us to look back inward now mm. that we need to make our country good. Make our system yes, work. Yes, we need to make our system work. We, or it's a collective, like you said. We'll all have to work together now. Mm. Even the government, the populace, the people needs to know what is going on. Now, a quack doctor performing surgery. Mm -mm. It's we shouldn't hear that at all. We shouldn't see it also. So we'll now um, go to this day newspaper. It will be the next paper up for review. And again, uh, the same story. South Africa goes tough, allows airlift of only 187 Nigerians on page 9 of this day newspaper as displayed there on your screen. In victory, Buhari extends hands of fellowship to opposition. Atiku PDP heads to Supreme Court. Oshomale, it's a win-win situation, he says. And the Federal Executive uh, Cons uh, Committee approves 10.7 trillion 2020 budget proposal, increases VAT to 7.2%. Uh, 7 mm -hmm. And we have a, a picture story here of uh, some of the returnees from last night saying, uh, home sweet home. Some of the 187 Nigerians evacuated from South Africa uh, on arrival at Mohammed, uh, Murtala Mohammed International Airport yesterday. Again, the same uh, story. What do you say? Uh, the president says he's extending hands of fellowship uh, to the opposition. In fact, he says it is within their constitutional rights, uh, according to the statement. Yeah. Mm. It is. It is within the constitutional right. I've always said personally that they are all the same. Nigerian politicians are the same. But at this point of the of the nation building, mm. yet I think it's a welcome development. We need to come together. We that's what we've been saying, mm. and we need to make our home home. I said that a few days ago. And now, if Nigeria is conducive and we have the basic amenities, we have less people moving out of the country. Mm. Yeah, there will always be immigration and immigration. Mm -hmm. There's no rule that people will have to travel for one thing or the other. But to go and not want to come back mm. is... Well, still on the matter. I mean, moving on, yes, Nigerians is, you might say, should move on. But um, we see that Atiku and... Uh, his cohorts are not moving on. They're heading to. I mean, they're well within their constitutional mm. rights. So again. again, checks and balances. You have the executive, yeah. you have the legislative, and you have the judicial. Yeah. So to to show to ensure that each uh, each arm of government mm -hmm. has um, is not completely uh, free of it, a check, for mm -hmm. lack of a better word, you have to ensure you ha he has to uh, he has to he has to fulfill his, uh, his constitutional rights. Mm. So. Okay, so uh, governors reject calls to scrap security votes. Please find that also on page 10. 
uh, conversations about the increase, the VAT, we talked about that mm -hmm. in the first paper also. Mm -hmm. uh, but please find that on page 6 too of uh, this day newspaper as displayed there. And at the back of uh, news, uh, this day newspaper, it's a column uh, by a columnist, Ulushegun Adeniyi, who says Abuja Kaduna train as a metaphor. And he has there the picture of the transportation uh, minister, Honorable Rutimi Amici. Please grab a copy and then find out what it is about. Abdurazak's first 100 days uh, is also one of the um, writings there. Please grab a copy of this day news uh, paper and find out what this is about. And then we move to the Nation newspaper. All of them, actually, all the papers are almost talking about the same thing. Here it says, 187 Nigerians returned from South Africa after, well, this guy says seven hours delay. Seven hours, eight hours, the, the truth of the matter is that there was a delay, yeah. but they are back home. You find that on page 44, uh, family members were at the airport to re uh, receive their people. Returnees get phone, SIM cards, and uh, a bank of industry training. Is that? Well, maybe that's a, a way to start, to say welcome. We don't know what that is, but it sounds like a good gesture. Uh, um, there um, and then we see Atiku Adamant as tribunal upholds Buhari's victory again. Just what we've just we talked about. It's victory for Nigerians. President say PDP say we will appeal subversion of justice. It's vindication of uh, Buhari's character says Tinubu and uh, Lawan Bajabi Amila and others. Okay verdict. Wike Sonwolu Obaseki Oyetola Biodun Akeredolu. All of these people greet uh, president, uh, the president on his victory. And then uh, Fire Miss Wife recount ordeal. Uh, that's on page 43 as displayed there on your screen. I'm marking there to verify uh, workforce on page 43. FIRS recovers 97.7 uh, billion from tax defaulters. Mm. Um, only 1.78% workforce in pension net. Find that, find out about that on page 44. And the federal government raises VAT again, same mm. story, to 7.2%. Uh, and 182 billion naira for roads. Yes, if I see you want to say something. Yes, Please I mean, I'm, I want to touch on both the FIRS, um, what their declaration has been, and also touch on the uh, 7.2, the Proposal to raise the, the VAT um, from seven from five percent to seven point two percent. Yeah, it's been approved, mm. but it still has to go. I'm sorry, but it still has to go past the legislative. Mm -hmm. okay. It cannot. It cannot be. Uh, yeah, it cannot be. It has been approved at executive. This is what I was talking about again in terms of the checks and balances. Yeah. 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 So back to what I was saying. 7.2. He mentioned the minimum wage earners. This is the, this is the, this is the reason they've given. I mean, when, when the um, Honourable Minister of Finance presented the, uh, the framework, the medium-term expenditure framework, they, one of the reasons they had given for, you know, obviously that would typically give you the um, priority in terms of expenditure mm -hmm. and look at also the constraints for budget constraints within that framework. And it's uh, normally, I think it's a three-year uh, yeah. three three, three term mm -hmm. in terms of looking at what, what would be spent, it needed to be spent within, within those three years. So I would say that um, the reason they've given is not a good enough reason. You cannot rob Peter okay. to pay Paul. No, it's not, a go it's not going to work long term. It's just, as, it just end up being a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying that the reason that you're increasing VAT is to, uh, to uh, redress the balance of minimum wage earners or to pay minimum wage, um, wage earners and also state level salaries. Bailouts, yeah. So if they're doing the state bailouts, at the point where they receive their uh, salaries, they still have to contend with the increased VAT. So That's that is true. a vicious cycle. In practical terms. Yeah. terms. Yeah. Yeah. So it's literally terms. a cycle of bring the money in, take the money out. Yeah. Garbage in, garbage, garbage out. out. Yeah. Mm. So I think it's something they have to do, sort of work on it again from within their, uh, what they have proposed the be FIRS. between the air. And then the FIRS as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, we spoke about this um, before, Amaka. They are, it's all clear that they're under a lot of pressure. You know, FDI is down, foreign direct investment is down. Mm. Uh, 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 any kind of revenue we're getting from uh, crude oil is obviously, obviously questionable no. as well. Mm -hmm. And um, this is what I feel they are resorting to, 
to try and redress that balance. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's fair on the Nigerian citizens. I think there are other ways we can be more constructive in terms of how we are trying to, um, while, I f while I feel every, every citizen should, working citizen should pay tax, mm -hmm. I feel there are other ways to uh, try and generate um, income and revenue for the country instead of actually going back and... Depending solely yeah, on the on, tax. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Can I add to that? Yes, you can add to it, okay. of course. <laughs> That's why we're here. Yeah, it's, very, it's very unfair on Nigerian citizens because um, tax and the uh, basic amenities, what are, is the government providing is like the egg and the chicken. Hmm. If you're not providing me what I need as a citizen, mm -hmm. why should I pay tax? And right now, there's a, there's a lot of people are paying tax, middle class and the working class. But the majority of the defaulters are mainly the high earners and the, uh, the well-to-do in the society. Mm. They are they, from what we've seen. And I feel our tax framework is a bit needs a bit of work on. Mm. Because if you look at most of the international uh, developed countries that we envy, they pay tax. They do. And they have high percentage. Mm. But the citizens are not complaining because they... It's commensurate with what they, to what they get from mm. the government. Mm -hmm. And they don't provide, like in Nigeria, you provide your own electricity, the roads, what everything. What do we not provide so, for ourselves? Exactly. Security. Yeah. And then you want people to pay tax. Mm. Well, I, I mean, I also want to just add and buttress to what Idowu has just said as well. I think that, um, especially when you look at it from a, a revenue generating perspective, mm -hmm. especially for FIRS, about 70% of their revenue, he's right, is generated from the um, oil industry. So you want to make sure that if, if you're saying that we need to raise more revenue, which I don't actually feel is true, I feel that they have actually gone above and beyond in the last mm. five years. I mean, uh, the uh, Director General himself, he said as well that in the last five years, Nigeria has collected more tax than it has in the duration of, yeah. of Nigeria being a democratic society. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want to commend them. I'm not saying everything they're doing is bad, but I just wish that we also look at uh, making sure that where the general bulk of the money is coming from or the revenues are being generated are actually going to focus, you focus on those areas and mm -hmm. make sure that most, most companies it. are compli compliant and it's optimized. All right. In the interest of time, uh, we will move to the Vanguard newspaper, uh, up for review now. And again, the same story, South Africa's immigration harass and detain returnees. Uh, we find that on page eight, flight was... Well, there is a delay because uh, the Vanguard newspaper says it's five hours. Uh, <laughs> allow only 188 of 320. Yeah, the hours keeps dropping. Yes, well, it, it depends on when each <laughs> of we, them we filing. We miss one hour each yeah, by, by each paper. <laughs> yeah, so we know that uh, there was a delay. That's established. Mm -hmm. And then again, President Buhari floors Atiku. Buhari eminently qualified to contest. The tribunal says electoral acts substantially complied with... Um, the ads, all that they needed to comply with. Um, you find that big story mm. on page five. And again, picture stories, homebound, and then arrival of uh, returnees who came back last night from South Africa. The airpiece flight that brought back the returnees, as we know, is um, uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Allen Onyema. Onyema. Mm -hmm. And the mo mother of Ondo Professor, Killers must be brought to book, the family insists. That was quite a yeah. sad story right there. Um, you please find that on page 14 as displayed uh, there on the screen. And FG, again, raises VAT to 7.6. Uh, FEC, FEC approves. 10.07 trillion budget estimate for 2020, and then removing security votes uh, will be inimical to development, cause chaos, uh, says governors. You find that please on page 12, and on minimum wage, Buhari orders immediate conclusion of consequential adjustments. Please find this conversation on page 9. UK reintroduces two-year work visa for Nigerians and other foreigners. That's too you will find on page uh, 9 of the Vanguard newspaper. We're trying to meet up with time, and so we'll move now to complete sports. I know that you all have your thoughts there, uh, but we need to um, meet up with our time. And in, on, on complete sports, we have Silver demands more goals from Iwobi. 
I know that you like to talk about that, uh, Dr. Ido. And raw salutes exciting egos, expresses satisfaction with team performance against Ukraine. You were talking about that yesterday, yeah. I remember. Mm -hmm. And um, raw compounds, Ihan Achos uh, forces wars. Nigeria recalls, recall fails to provide forward with confidence. Please find all of this uh, sports conversation on Complete Sports. Ronaldo sets new Euro records. Uh, all of them you find it on the front page and of course more sports news on the back page. Do you want to say anything on any of the sports news? You pass. You pass. All right. Thank you so very much, uh, both of you, uh, Dr. Idowu and uh, of course Ifi Oji for joining me this morning on Off the Press to dissect the national dailies. We'll do this again tomorrow by 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa and I am Amaka Okoye. Please have yourselves a great day.